everyone and welcome to another video on the Tolis Airbus A321 and today we're going to look at what makes the Airbus an Airbus its famous feature the fly-by-wire and the control laws that it uses this is quite a big topic um, so I may have to split this up into a few videos but today we're going to start off by looking at normal law and what exactly that means and what is the Airbus trying to do with us as we control it through the side stick I'm a real world Airbus pilot, so I'll be using uh, that experience to hopefully give you some more context on your home simulations. As ever, this is not for any real world use, it's just for our use in X-Plane and to have a look at this uh, TOLIS product. Great, so let's get started. So we're here on the ground in uh, Milan Linate Airport, and we are effectively in a version of direct law. So if I bring up the flight control page, what that means is whilst I'm on the ground, if I move the side stick, I can show you the side stick here, if I move this, the controls move exactly with me. Uh, so the size it just commands a control position. And this is how most conventional aeroplanes are. Your Boeing 737 and your Cessna 172 and everything like that. Uh, you'll just be controlling the flight controls with an input. So that's how the Airbus uh, sets itself up on the ground. And that's how we do our flight control check and so on. And what we're going to do is we're going to get airborne and then I'm going to show you uh, what normal flight law looks like, which is what we spend 99.99% of our time flying around in. So as we start our takeoff roll, we set our side stick half forward. And as you can see on the uh, flight control display, that puts the elevators down. So it is a direct control of that. Once we rotate and we get the aircraft into the air, things will start to change and there's a, a few differences and the law will blend from this sort of ground law where we have this direct control of the flight controls into uh, normal law once we get up and into the air. So let's have a look at that. So first of all, we'll do our normal takeoff. So there's our V1. There's our rotate, three degrees a second. And we come up to the flight directors and into nav mode. So I'm having to hold some input on the side stick, but then shortly afterwards, now I can let go. So I've let go of the side stick now, completely neutral. You can see that if I waggle it. And suddenly the airplane's flying up and it's holding that pitch and roll exactly as I set it. So if I now put it right, it will hold five degrees of bank and so on. So we're now into normal law. Positive climb, gear up, put it in autopilot. So let's get up to, uh, we'll go to 15,000 feet today and have a look at what that actually means. So here we are in the cruise uh, of sorts. It's just a little, I have to put in a short route to uh, Milan, to the other Milan airport. And let's have a look at normal law. So I'm going to take out the autopilot. That's disconnected and you'll see that I don't have to do anything to keep it here. So let's get rid of all the automatics as well. We don't need the flight directors. So flight directors go off and I'll put it on the bird. The bird is showing us our flight path angle through the air. So when it sits on the horizon like this, it tells me I'm flying level. If I raise the nose, the bird will go above it and we can see that I've got an angle increasing. So if I set the wings of that bird on the 2.5 degree line, I'm climbing at 2.5 degrees effectively. So let's put it back to level flight. As you can see, I've got the auto thrust in, in speed mode. I'm just going to wind the altitude out of the way. Okay, so in normal law, the side stick movement forward and backwards, so forwards, backwards, nose down, nose up, is commanding a G. So if I leave it neutral, I want the airplane to maintain one G, which would be uh, effectively level flight. If I pull back, I'm asking for more than one G. So the airplane will increase the G factor and that's why it's pulling up. If I then let go, it returns to 1G, which is why it effectively holds itself where it is, because it just maintains that flight path. It typically looks like this, where you end up holding the attitude that you set. So if I put the nose down, it's asking for less than 1G. And then if I release it, it will return to 1G. And that's what we're commanding through the side stick in pitch which is very unusual for airliners. It's most airplanes will just, obviously you just command the flight controls. Because of that, I don't have to trim. So as we'll see, I can pull the nose up all the way to 10 degrees, hold it there and the airplane applies thrust and trims for me because it's the overall, the fly-by-wire system is asking for a G-force. And then we put the nose down and it does the same for us. So that's in normal law, which is what we're flying around in today. So how do we know we're in normal law and not another law like alternate or direct? So we look on our PFT, we have these little, little green um, eyebrows, some people call them, these little two dashes, equal signs. And these show the 
the protections. So that is the maximum bank I can roll the airplane to. And you can see here at minus 15 degrees, there is a maximum pitch down and at plus 30, there'll be a maximum pitch up. So in normal law, those protections are active and we won't be able to go past them. This is sitting at about, it's about 67 degrees, slightly under. If I was to bank the airplane as hard as I could to the left, I wouldn't be able to go past those because I'm in normal law. But there's a few other things to the roll in the Airbus. Just like in pitch, it's not, it's not the same as a conventional airplane. When we roll the Airbus with the side stick, we're not commanding an aileron input, we're commanding a rate of roll. So if I move it a little bit to the left, I'm asking for a small rate of roll and the airplane does that itself. If I move it more, I'm asking for a higher rate of roll. And then if I let go, zero. And that's why it will then hold that bank angle that I've set because I want zero rate of roll. So it's going to keep where I left it and I'll move it slightly to the right, slow. If I move it a lot, we get a high rate of roll. And if I put it 20 degrees to the right there, it's just going to hold that. And then because we're still asking for 1G in pitch, it will maintain whatever flight path, oh, roughly what flight path I was doing. It's effectively 1G. So if I put the bird on the horizon like that, it will stay there. And that's where the Airbus is a real... Uh, joy to fly in this sense because I can fly it around doing these turns and I don't have to fiddle around with any retrimming or pitch changes. I just move the side stick to the left like that without any pitch adjustment and it just keeps that bird on the horizon, keeps 1G for me and brings the airplane around to the left. Now this only works this uh, bank angle up to 33 degrees. If I go past 33 degrees, I have to hold the side stick in because that's more than we would realistically fly. You don't typically uh, bank more than 30 degrees uh, in normal flying with passengers. Uh, it's, it's relatively rare. So if I go past it like this, I now have to actually hold the side stick to maintain that. So I go to the 45 degree, which is that next white line. I actually have to hold in the side stick. I also have to start pulling up. Because once you go past 32 degrees, the airplane will stop auto uh, maintaining that 1G and you have to pull back to keep it. You're effectively in a slightly abnormal situation because you shouldn't really be banking with this sort of steep turn. So you can see there, a little bit of side stick back pressure needed to hold it. If I now let go, it will return to 33 degrees. So I'll let go of the side stick and there we go, just over 30 degrees and it sits there. And now I can put the bird back on the horizon and we go into level flight again. And then I can put it back at any bank angle I choose. If I was to go full side stick over, I'd need to do the same thing. So I have to hold it to get it to 67 and then I need to pull back. We'd also lose some trimming. So the auto trimmer will stop running at those sorts of bank angles. So let's have a look at that. We go full right, full right, you start to see alpha prot come up at the bottom, which I'll talk about later. And you see there's no trimming, so we get that the descent rate. I'm not going to pull back too much or we'll end up with the uh, alpha protection. And there we go. So if I let go now, airplane recovers. Now that's uh, unrealistically high bank angle. You wouldn't want to reach that, but it is a protection in there. At 67 degrees, your G-forces will be quite high. And with the flaps up, the Airbus is limited to 2.5 G. A good way to demonstrate this uh, roll rate is that the flight controls don't move to where the stick is, obviously, because once I reach my maximum bank, they stop moving. So I can go full side stick like I do now. We get the ailerons and the roll spoilers move. And then as we reach that bank limit, you'll see them go to neutral. Same for the other way. We get aileron full down. And then once we reach our maximum bank the other way, you might be able to just about see it almost go to neutral. So it's that roll rate. So at these speeds, you see they're not moving very much at all. If I was to be slower, so I'll just do that now. And you'll see now that the uh, ailerons will have to move more because there's less air moving over them. So exactly the same position on the side stick, full side stick, and you'll see them move significantly more than they were earlier. And the ailerons there. And you see it adjusts because it adjusts to maintain that roll rate. So in the Airbus, you might reach full side stick deflection for some reason. Maybe it's a crosswind, a uh, really strong blustery day. But it doesn't mean you've run out of authority on the airplane. It just means that you've used up as much roll rate as uh, it's asking for. And it takes the airplane maybe a couple of seconds to actually get there. So there you go, the visual demonstration of what that means. 
in normal law, we have G protection. So if I put the nose down like this to minus 15, which again is a limit, so it won't let me go below that and accelerate. If I then pull back, I can't over G the airplane. I could over speed, as we may do here, but that would be 2.5 G and it will fly 2.5 G all the way up. And same for negative. It's allowed to go to minus 1 G with the flaps up. So with full nose down, we'll only go to minus 1 G. And that is a big advantage. It means that if I was flying along and I had a GPWS maneuver right now, say a, a mountain in front of me for whatever reason, I can simply go full toga, full back stick like that, and the airplane will deliver the highest G-force it can without overstressing the airplane. In a conventional airplane, you'd have to be careful with it. You'd have to think. Whereas in the Airbus, you can pull full back stick in normal law and it won't overstress. That's, that's the idea behind it. In the real airplane, you actually get the G indication above a certain G-force. You'll see it appear here on the uh, lower ECAM display or the status display. Sadly, as you can see, if I go full nose down or full nose up, uh, it doesn't actually put that into the display here. If I have the flaps out, the G limits change and it goes from 0G as a lower limit to 2G as an upper limit. And the Airbus accounts for that as well. It's a, it's a very clever system. So what else does normal law do for us? Well, it accounts for the pitch power couple. So if I now take out the auto thrust and move the thrust levers manually to idle, in a conventional jet airliner, because we have those engines underneath the wings here and the thrust vector comes out the back, when I reduce thrust, the nose will try and drop because we have the power coming on underneath. If I increase the thrust, there's more power un up below the airplane so the nose will try and rise. It has a moment effect on the airplane. But in the Airbus, as we can see, that is all accounted for. I can go toga thrust, and I'm doing absolutely nothing to the side stick, completely neutral, and you'll see that we stay spot on level. It just keeps that 1G in uh, the vertical profile. So this makes it very simple to fly around, uh, even with manual thrust, although obviously careful monitoring required. It's not perfect, so there are gentle changes that you might have to account for, but ultimately, compared to what you'd get in a 757 or something like that, it's uh, yeah, very simple. It also trims for us, very famous in the Airbus, so there it goes, forward trim on there, and I can just bring the thrust back to something reasonable. And again, in a conventional jet airliner, I would expect the nose to drop, and I'd have to hold the nose up, but in the Airbus, absolutely nothing. It just stays level. I talk about it a bit in my landing video and the subsequent landing Q&A video. Uh, so it accounts for the crosswind effect where when you put the rudder in to make the airplane uh, point down the runway, it keeps the wings level for you pretty much. It does a good job of that. So yeah, a very clever system. It removes a lot of the secondary effects that we see. It's not perfect, so you can't rely on it to do absolutely everything and you do have to adjust it, but it is a very good system. So to give you some context, here is a 66 degree bank turn and you'll see uh, it's quite extreme. It's more than you'd ever really want to do in the airliner. Um, but yeah, it is possible in the Airbus. So if I go full side stick left, I've got a lot of thrust on here and I might need to pull back a little bit as well. And there it is, 66 degrees. So yeah, that's not something you'd be doing with passengers on board. They would not be happy. But we can do this. We aren't overstressing the airplane. It's got the G protection. You still can't reverse things. So you don't want to go from full up to full down to full left to full right. The airplanes aren't really designed for that, even with their G limits. But it does give us uh, some room to, to turn if we absolutely need to. So next I want to look at overspeeding. I just thought I'd choose, we're just uh, hanging around the Alps and the Dolomites. I just thought it'd be a fun place to do this, give a bit of a view out the window. So if we look at the PFD, we actually have some protections for overspeeding as well. And before we get there, I'll just show you. So we see this little green eyebrow marker here. So it's another protection. So if I put the air bus into a descent with, I've got manual thrust on at the moment, it will overspeed a little bit and then eventually it will raise the nose. And we'll see that now. So I'm gonna lower the nose, add a bit of thrust, wings level, and it will go into the overspeed and eventually it will pitch up. So I've got some thrust on, I'm doing nothing to the side stick and it pitches up and it will gradually return us back out of the overspeed or it will sit very close to it. It won't stop you from overspeeding, but it stops the airplane from going even faster than this. 
And now I have the option to override it slightly in normal law. So if I now push full forward on the side stick, I can actually get a bit faster. So down we go. So this gives you a little bit of flexibility, even if you're up at the uh, overspeed territory. Now, why you would do this, very few situations where you would consider uh, intentionally keeping the airplane in an overspeed. But there you go. So I can now keep it past those green markers just by holding forward on the side stick. And then once I let go, it will raise a nose and return us back. So that's another great feature of the normal law in the Airbus, a bit of overspeed protection. So obviously next we'll have a look at the low speed protection. So here we are now back at 220 knots and we'll start to look at what would happen if we try and get slow. So the auto thrust is available on this Airbus today. If it was broken, some of these features would not work and I'll talk about those as we go through. But today we have auto thrust. Even if I turn it off, which I will now, bring the thrust levers to idle, there is still alpha floor protection available. But until we get there, let's have a look. So I've got a few speeds. I've got my VLS, lowest selectable speed here. And this is the top of V alpha prot, alpha protection. Alpha meaning angle of attack in this case. So as I come around the corner, and I'll put the bird on the horizon, the airplane will get slow. And it will come all the way back to the top of V alpha prot. Now the TOLIS is not quite as good at this as the real Airbus is. Um, so that is something I'd like to point out. So this is not exactly how the real airplane will behave, which is why, as always, this is not for any real world use, but it gives you an idea. So through VLS, the airplane will keep slowing down and then it's going to reach alpha prot and it won't want to go any slower. So to keep that speed, it will lower the nose for me. So if I, again, I'm going to pitch up. So let's say we're at seven and a half degrees of pitch and now I've reached alpha prot. So now instead of keeping slowing down to a stall which is what a conventional airplane would do you'll see it keeps lowering the nose for me and we get our vertical speed increasing i'll put the wings to level now we're pointing away from the mountains and there we go and it just sits there as it descends so this is the case where it won't maintain 1g and i've got my side stick at neutral here as you can see if i pull back we go a bit slower into alpha prop and then once i let go it'll sit at the top so what it's doing now, once we enter alpha prot to so the top of this red and black, uh, sorry, amber and black section on the PFD speed tape, then we're commanding an angle of attack. So if I pull back on the side stick now, I'm not flying a G-force anymore. I'm commanding for a higher angle of attack and it will increase that uh, up to alpha max, which is this red bar here. At alpha max, it doesn't matter how far I pull back the side stick, it will not go to any higher angle of attack and it will not slow down anymore. That is the, the limit. And that is, in theory, in normal law, why you cannot get a stall warner, in theory. Um, because, and it's very important, you know which control law you're in. But in normal law, if I pull full back on the side stick now, it will just go to alpha max and stay there. At some point in between alpha prot and alpha max, alpha floor will kick in, which effectively brings the engines to toga. So you may see that during this uh, session. If your auto thrust is not working, so it could be broken, you could fly without it, it could be MEL'd under our minimum equipment list, then you will not get uh, alpha floor. So it is not always there, but it is in normal day, it is a protection that's in there. So if I pull back now, I will get maximum alpha max and alpha prot will come, uh, sorry, uh, alpha floor will come in in the meantime. So in the real airplane, once I'm in alpha prot and it lowers the nose as it is here, if I then add thrust, it will actually stay at alpha prot. So it, it will pitch up to maintain that angle of attack because we're now commanding in that angle of attack as I talked about. The TOLIS doesn't seem to do this quite so well. So I'm gonna keep pitching up, getting the angle of attack, and now I'm gonna add thrust. So you'd expect the airplane to increase in speed, but what, what it actually does, and here comes that thrust, what it actually does and I'm holding the side stick a little bit to do this. I'm just maintaining an angle of attack. So even if I just hold the side stick there, you'll see that the nose is increasing because it's trying to keep that angle of attack. In the real airplane, if I let it go to neutral and add thrust, whilst it's at alpha prot, it will increase the nose and increase the nose. The TOLIS seems to actually increase the speed. But in the real airplane, oh, it's slightly increasing the pitch. In the real airplane, it's quite noticeable. And to get out of alpha prot into, into the normal speed range, I have to actively push forward. So I'll do it now, push forward on the side stick, nose comes down, and there we go. See if the dome light helps. Uh, and then you can get back into your normal sort of speed range. So I know what you're all thinking. Let's have a look at the alpha max. So let's do that now. So I'm going to go full back stick, 
and we'll see at some point alpha floor will kick in and the engines will come to toga uh, and we'll also see uh, the airplane go no slower than alpha max now it's possible as you pull back at high speed to have these increase so these are not speeds as such they're the angle of attacks we're talking about at the lower end of the, uh, the speed range so i'm going to go full back stick now here we go all the way back and holding it there and as we can see there's alpha floor which means the thrust will kick into toga and you see it's an auto thrust function so alpha floor turns on auto thrust is now on there's the engine at toga and there's alpha max and it will not go any slower than that full back stick holding it in holding it in holding it in if we go outside that's us dragging along quite slow but not stalling once i release the side stick as i've done oh excuse me once i release the side stick now we're back at neutral the nose lowers it'll go to the top of alpha prot and i need to push forwards to get back into the normal flight range there's an important fma now we've got toga lock so the thrust is now locked at toga so i need to retake control of it by disengaging the auto thrust you'd use the little red buttons in in real life um, and now i can get the thrust back where i want Something to note in the Airbus when you're putting out flaps is that it's not quite as perfect as, uh, as some might like. So it's going to try and maintain 1G, but it won't always manage that depending on your speed and configuration. So it may balloon high. It mostly accounts for it though, compared to a conventional aeroplane where you'd have to retrim um, and so on to just to maintain level flight. I'm now going to do nothing on the side so you can put out some flaps. So I'm going to select a speed of 180. I'm in manual thrust anyway. If I put out flap one, we're just going to get the slats. I can do this because we're below 20,000 feet, even though we are quite high. And I'm going to put it to level flight. So we go level flights now. Slats won't really have much impact. They, they come out the front of the wings. They don't provide much lift. They just allow us to increase our angle of attack. Now below 200 knots, I'm going to put out flap two. And I'm doing nothing on the side stick, totally neutral. And you'll see that because we're quite fast, 200 knots is quite fast for flap two. As we get all the lift coming out on the back of the wing, the airplane starts to balloon. And if you watch, it lowers the nose for us. So it does try. It's trying to keep 1G, uh, but essentially it, it does its best, but there's a little bit of a balloon. And that's why we don't put the flap out whilst we're descending on the vertical profile for a track FBA approach, if you've seen my tutorial on that. There's another example of this we'll have a look at after takeoff. So here we are on a normal takeoff. And what I'm going to show you is once we get into the air, without putting in the autopilot, I'm going to show you what happens to the flaps and the way the airplane uh, doesn't actually stay uh, on its same pitch on the airbus we're generally used to it keeping the same pitch but in this case it won't so there's our rotate three degrees a second okay blends into normal law now positive climb gear up nav and up we go and when i bring the flaps to zero instead of actually keeping the exact pitch I've got, so now I'm in normal law, so it's flying 1G and it generally just holds that pitch for me and it auto trims. Bit of a, a, a <laughs> wing waving departure out of Milan. It's got quite a few little noise pavement parts to it. So we get through 1500 feet and accelerates. Now we're in thrust climb, climb, we've got our auto thrusts. Speed's increasing and I'm lowering the nose gradually with the flight directors as it tries to uh, accelerate. Once we get above S speed, we're going to bring the flaps to zero and we'll see what happens to the, uh, the pitch. There you go, as I said, a bit more wing wobbling from the uh, this exact SID. I find the flight directors ever so slightly less aggressive in the real airplane than this one. So in fact, let's turn them off. We don't need them now. Not important. We're above S speed, so flaps coming to zero, and you'd expect that to stay there. But if you watch, flaps to zero, they retract, and the airplane pitches up, and it's pitching up, and it's pitching up. But our vertical speed is staying the same, and it's pitching up. Because what it's trying to do is keep that rough G force. That's my understanding of it. So uh, pilots often think that oh well, it should it should keep me at that pitch. So what you actually have to do to keep the pitch with the flight directors is hold the nose down. But what is that, the airplane's trying to do is raise the nose to keep you at that uh, flight path angle at that 1G. 
so that's just something you might notice when you take off in the Airbus. So that's it for today. As I said, this is the first part in a series where we'll look at the Airbus flight control laws, what they mean and how they affect us as pilots. Next, we'll be looking at some of the alternate law uh, features, which will include stalling. I hope that's been interesting for you. As ever, not for any real world use. There are some differences which we've talked about as we've gone along. Um, so just for our own use in X-Plane. But thank you very much for watching. Plenty more videos to come. Live streams will be starting again soon. So I look forward to seeing you in one of those.